Uh, so we need to do a thing here, which is that we need to... These segments are silence detection segments. So they are effectively the, um, the silences, the silent segments, something like that. Uh, if we want to think about like what the episodes are, the episode periods maybe is a, is a good word there. We can build that. Um, what's a good way of doing that? We can't just map because we need data. Um, we need data across, across the, um, ooh, what about a zip? What about a zip? Thinking of like functional, um, Kind of like array list type operations. Do we have in the stream data the total length of the stream? I think we do. So to see that, I would need to look at the stream structs. And we can see in the uh, detail view. Uh, I think we must be calculating it somewhere, right? So we had the video clips and we have their durations. Yes. Okay. The reason is um, you know, actually the UI would be helpful to kind of illustrate this, right? So the overall length of time for the whole stream, right? It starts at zero time, the zero, uh, zero seconds duration. And, and the end is however long this video was, which is probably like four hours and some change, uh, for this particular stream, right? So what we have right now is we have a list that has three elements in it, which are the start and start time, start and stop times of these yellow bars, right? So what we really want is we want zero and the start time of this bar, the end time of the first bar and the start time of the sec second bar, the end time of the second bar and the start time of the third bar, and the end time of the third bar and the end of the, the stream, right? So we have one, two, three, four start times, and one, two, three, four end times. If we pair those up, start to end, start to end, wait, uh, sorry, uh, hmm, actually, how would that work? It would actually be more like start to start, end to start, end to start, end to start, uh, end to end. Okay, if we call the beginning of, uh, let's imagine, ooh, here's what we do. Let's imagine that at the beginning of the stream, there is a zero length uh, segment, right? So let's start and end is both zero. Then we go end to start, end to start, end to start, end to, and then we imagine there is a zero length silence segment at the end of the stream. Um, then we can go end to start, right? So we, we would essentially, what we would do is we would say, okay, instead of there being three s segments here, there are actually five. We take all of the ends and all of the starts and then pair those together. I don't know, is there a zip function in JavaScript? It's probably not. 
you know, we could pull in something that would provide that like underscore or something, but I'm not going to. We can, you know, we don't, we don't have to do it that way. We can just, you know, do a loop, but thinking about it in those terms is often quite helpful. I think what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm just going to create a function here in this file that is going to transform silence, the text, the silence, silences into, uh, things, <laughs> non silences, the points in between, um, I guess episodes is really what we're, they're not episodes yet, but that, that's kind of the intent. So I might make a function called, um, yeah, see that words are hard silences to, um, Hmm. What about periods between? Yeah, and this is gonna do something. What, what is Copilot trying to do here? Okay, so we are doing a reduce of, so we are, we're, we're, we're gonna end up with a number with that. So I don't want that. Are there other suggestions? So this is going to start with the first period and say the start, I mean, that's not right. Uh, and that's also not right. Uh, let's also model. So yes, so the first thing I think I wanna do is I'm gonna refactor, I'm gonna rename. Oh, can't, okay. We're just gonna call this a segment because we're gonna use this for both, both in and out. All right. Oh, that's fine. That's just because I haven't closed something up here yet. All right, so this is gonna take an array of segments and we're gonna return a array of segment. And uh, yeah, you can do something like this. Um, uh, what we could do, I mean, this can work as long as we actually add those additional segments to the beginning and the end. And then what, what do we end up with? So say we take this, but say we say, uh, const, um, I mean, I think implicit in how we're doing everything, everything is already sorted correctly. Let's let's, let's assume that's the case. Uh, padded segments is going to be, yeah, something like that. Uh, that. That's a good try, but it's wrong. The other thing is that we also need the total duration to be able to do this. We know that start is zero, uh, of course, these strings are ISO 8601 uh, durations. So this will be PT0S is start. And the end is the beginning of, um, no, 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 we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that, right? So I already said how we're gonna do this. The start and end of the first segment is uh, zero seconds in. And then uh, what we're gonna say is we're gonna say the total duration is a string, a sting. Uh, <laughs> and so then the the end segment here is gonna start and end at that point in time. And so then we iterate over padded segments. So this when we look at the, uh, yeah, and i is less than the total length. So we'll stop at that last real segment and we'll be looking ahead. So ignoring everything else, right? So if you just think about this loop 
in terms of when it gets to the last place it gets, it'll be where I is the index of the last real segment. So it'll get the, it'll say the start is the end of that segment. That is the silence, the end of the silence, and then is the start. And the, the end of that last generated period is the start of our thing right here. And the start is always total duration. Then, um, if we think about the, the other case here at the beginning where I is zero. So if I is zero, then segment sub I represents this item. The start is the end of this at zero seconds. So the very beginning. And then the end of the first period, z the zeroth period, uh, is segments I plus one, which will be the first real segments, the first silences start. Now, I think to convince myself this, this works without writing any tests, I could write tests, but instead I'm thinking <laughs> um, if I is one, then this will represent the first silence. And so the start of, or I'm saying the silence, but the selected silence specifically, the thing that we are selecting in the UI here, right? Um, that first element there, its end will be the start of the first, uh, the, the next period. And the end of that period will be the following selected silences start. And I will always be valid because we stop when I is equal to, if I is equal to the last element, then I plus one doesn't exist. So this would be trying to access start of undefined, but we can't get there because of this guard. And so that should get us all of the periods between the segments that have been selected. Now, this is not quite enough. <laughs> it's getting there, but it's not quite enough. So um, we still need to get the total duration. Uh, and in retrospect, that might be something we might want to provide in the uh, just to like directly in the um, data from the stream, but currently we're not. But we do have the video clips, and the video clips have a duration, which again is ISO eighty six oh one duration. So yeah, uh, let's see. We want to do that, and that means we need to return here. We're gonna do some work inside of the mutation, I think, so that we're not doing all of this work for every render. Yeah. Okay, so... To do this, we need to do some things. This is starting to make me regret having It's so many conversions, right? Because we're gonna need to convert the ISO 8601 durations from the video clips uh, into numbers and then sum them all, right? Their durations. So this is easier than if they were like timestamps um, because we can represent them just as a number, like a number of seconds with a fractional part if they're like, uh, fractions of a second involved. But we can sum them all up 
and then I want to convert it back to ISO 8601 so it'll be in the same representation as this. The alternative would be to say right here and now to convert them all into numbers. I don't know that I want to do that. Am I going to need the other things as numbers anywhere in the front end? Right? We're gonna we're gonna have these strings, string representations of the durations, and we're gonna send them back to the API to create. And we're not manipulating those values here, uh, which is good. Okay, I think I'll, I'll just do it. Um, so we need a total iteration. <laughs> and that, that is kind of how we want to start, except we, we need to do some other things first. So we have a, a file, it's like ISO duration, that has some handy functions. So uh, again, this is kind of, this is working from where we want to be to what we have, which you might think of backwards, or you might think of as the natural way <laughs> to do it. Um, so we want, uh, we want a string. So how are we gonna get a string? Yeah, format duration, but that does not give us ISO 8601. We have parse into seconds, which parses ISO 8601 duration into a number. We have a function that takes a duration and gives us ISO 8601 thingy. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Technically, we're not really aiming at getting, um, like, it's fine if the string that we're passing around is just seconds. Like, I don't think I could, I could pull out my copy of ISO 8601, but I'm pretty sure that we're allowed to have like 20,000 seconds. We don't have to express things in minutes and hours if we don't want to. Uh, at least this code supports that. So uh, that's gonna make this easier. So let's say we wanna do, we wanna use this function, right? And then we have to actually import it. Yeah, there you go. And then this takes an object with some keys. And so we can pass in, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that, Copilot, stop it. We're gonna pass in seconds. Now, Uh, oh, I see, they're required. Should they be required? I don't know. Mm, at least not here. What if I said that these fields are not required? Does that break uh, any of my code? Yeah, because here we're not checking to see if it's undefined. Does it matter? I don't think it does. Like we can leave these and actually I could do what Copilot suggested. Now, what about the behavior for milliseconds? If duration that milliseconds greater than zero, undefined is not greater than zero. Or if it was zero. Um, Okay, so if we if we essentially give a milliseconds value of zero, then it just ignores it. It's kind of a weird API, actually, but uh, yeah, it would be much nicer to have something that we just pass in a value in seconds. Hey, you know what? <laughs> How are we talking about things where you could override it, uh, override the signature? This would be, this, this could be a use case. Uh, anyway, um, but we're not doing Elixir. 
So for seconds, now we want to do the thing, thing, the same, the thing that we saw before, where we we are looking at record dot video clips, and we're gonna reduce video clips. Why not? <laughs> does does Elixir can Elixir compile to uh, like WebAssembly? I was looking at Rust to WebAssembly the other day. I've never used. Um, I mean, not just Rust to WebAssembly, but any kind of WebAssembly stuff for front end. All right, so now uh, this might be right. So we're gonna have the accumulator be the number that we're adding up. So we're, we're just summing, but part of the summing is grabbing the clip and then getting the duration from the clip. Is that actually the, uh, the field name? Yeah, it is duration. I have no idea, my guess is no, because it runs in the Erlang VM. I mean, someone could have written, someone could have written a, uh, a compiler, a transpiler, a something. So parse into seconds is a function that takes the ISO 8611 duration and turns it into seconds. Currently looking at my code for improvements. All right. Uh, so this should grab the value in seconds of the duration of all the clips and then sum them together and then work it all back into ISO 8601 duration format. Hey, death row. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome in. Okay, so now we have the thing that we need to call periods between segments. I missed some of the coding, can I start over? Yeah, let me just RMRF the whole thing and we'll just start from scratch. Sounds good. Orb, right? WebAssembly with Elixir, all right. Well, put that on the list. <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the short version of what's going on right now is we have a UI and in the UI, uh, I have a box and the box represents a stream, like a Twitch stream. So like this was a, a day months ago now where I was playing Power World and we did like a four hour stream and, uh, I took three breaks in the stream. And so. Uh, I've selected here, because th this is selectable, I've selected the three breaks. And what I want to do is I want to, um, short term, <laughs> what I'm doing right now is making it so that I can translate the selection of these three things into actually the time, the points in time that are the beginning of the stream to the first break, the end of the first break to the beginning of the second, and so on and so forth for these four areas segments, periods, whatever you want to call them for the purpose of then making a request to the back end to create an episode for each of those four segments of the video. Uh, and we, we've made some progress. So we have a function periods between segments. Uh, it takes two arguments. Uh, one, is the, it's a good try. Uh, one is the segments, which this component is getting from the parent component. And then the second argument, stop it copilot. I don't want you to do that. I'm already doing it. Uh, total duration is the total length uh, of the whole stream. Like the, how long all the video segments to, together are. And we need that so that we can figure out, because we know the beginning of the stream starts at zero seconds, because that's that's how we've defined it. Um, but we have to look at all the videos. We're not, we're not caching how long the whole stream was anywhere. So we just sum up the length of all the video segments because that, that'll be the length of the stream. Although maybe I really should have done that given the number of times I've, I think this is maybe the second time I've had to do this. Uh, okay, so then, now we have the periods, uh, the, 
periods of the episodes. And we want to turn that into a set of records. So we have a struct in the back end that says, here's, here's how the data is supposed to look. Um, and each episode can have multiple tracks, but in this case, the way we're setting it up, there'll just be one track. And that track will look like this. Yeah, with a start and an end. Yeah, like that. And then the title is gonna be something. I'm probably, let me grab the index. Oops, there we go. And um, yeah, you can find record. There we go. Episode thingy. Uh, let's let's include the name of the stream in here as well. So I think that should be like record title. Okay. This might actually work. <laughs> uh, so what should happen is I should be able to click the button and then it makes a request to the back end, sending all of these records over, all of these uh, objects, and each object will be a new episode. Now we have an error somewhere over here. Uh, right, because we've not actually hooked this up yet. So the last bit of this is that we need a callback function um, that is going to work. Can we just pass set selected segment indices as on change? Yep, that's what Copilot suggests. All right, so now when whenever we change, hey, brainless. Brainless Society gifted a tier one subscription to Death Row Gamer. Thanks for the uh, the sub gift to Death Row. Your your third gifted sub in the channel. All right, now uh, Death Row won't have ads. <laughs> Which is great. Hold on, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Ooh, okay. So, uh, on change gets run whenever we click stuff in here. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, separate window maybe for the inspector. See what's going on? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Making it rain. Uh, all right, so what happens if I click the button? Actually, let me, um... no, this should be fine, right? So it should have refreshed, which means just ignore that. <laughs> uh, yeah, just ignore that. Uh, if I click, Start bulk create. Let me go over to the network tab. Oh, maybe not. Segment sub I plus one is undefined. Aww. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I see the problem. <laughs> do you do you see the problem? <laughs> Hold on, where is that code? Uh, it's in here, right? Uh, no, in the function, in the function. Yeah. Do you see the problem? <laughs> So after I created padded segments that have the start, the extra start and end so that this loop would work and I updated the condition, 
I, I didn't update the part where we were actually reading the segments to use that. So I is constrained to the, you know, to, to uh, a value that is for a list that is uh, at least one longer than segments actually is. So that's why I plus one was uh, not doing the right thing. All right, so now we have a break, break point. Why don't I have a break point? Weird. Uh, run it. JSON.parse, unexpected end of data, line one, column one. We got a, uh, what, what's going on here? <laughs> what is this? API records, object, 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 object. Whoops. What did we do? Um, Oh, we didn't call bulk create the right way is what we did. So bulk create is supposed to be called by first telling it the kind of resource. Uh, I mean, technically it's a string. It's just a string that gets put on the end of the, uh, the URL. Yeah, grab the whole object instead of the item you want. Yeah, well, it's because <laughs> this function is supposed to take two arguments. Uh, and, oh, why? Right, so we don't have type information here because of reasons. Is this supposed to be episodes or episode? I think it's supposed to be episodes. Let's go to our, um, where we're defining this endpoint. Yeah, it's episodes, records, episodes. Okay, so that's right. This is right. The reason uh, we didn't already catch this error, like the reason we don't have a little red dot here saying this is wrong is because we don't have type information and that's because uh, reasons. T data provider. Data provider use context as T data provider extends. I wonder if there's a way to get type information for the data provider in the place where we're using it. It's actually a proxy object, which validates the response format, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. So there's potentially an art, uh, like a type argument we could pass here that I guess what we'd have to do then is we'd have to like, I don't think there's a way to do that other than, um, like importing this file, which the whole point, like the point of this is not to directly import that. It's like registered in React admin, and then we use the hook to get a hold of it. So the, the consequence of that is that we don't actually have type information about the methods that are on it, which means things like that can happen. So uh, this first argument was supposed to be like the name of the endpoint, the resource type. And the second argument was the, the data second argument was the data. And so we were passing that as the first arg, and so it was doing silly things. All right. Uh, so if I click the button again, we get the normal error, and then we get a 500 internal server error. Excellent, what was the response? No response. Okay, so the good news, we did a put to uh, localhost 8080 slash API, which is then what's hooked up to Nginx and goes to our uh, CRUD API microservice um, into records episodes. So that's right. 
So that means something went wrong on the back end. All right, so let's see about that. Ba, 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 ba. Quad API. All right. Uh, let's see. Can I can I zoom in? Nope, that scrolls. Control. There we go. All right. So what do we got? Is that legible on stream? You have to let me know. If I I could probably I could zoom this in further if we need to. Error inserting records. Null value in column tracks of relation episodes violates not null constraint. Oh. I think I know. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to take the lack of response as meaning this is perfectly legible the way it is. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. Uh, so I think what's going on here in create bulk and probably in create two, since this was essentially a copy paste of the other one. Um, there is a tracks, um, column that's not nullable. It's a JSON field inside of the episodes table, and we're not setting it to anything. Now this create episode request, this does take tracks. So we should be able to set tracks. Also stream ID. Why aren't we setting that? That's weird. Tracks. Is that? Nope. Doesn't like that. Uh, vec track diesel expression is not satisfied by this. Hmm. Yeah, JSONB column type. Do we have other JSONB column types? Uh, control shift F. There we go. Yeah, like transcription segments. How are we setting that? Uh, well, that's an update set operation. Ah. Okay. So I have to figure out how this is supposed to work. Um, I think the issue, hey Lady Versai, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, I think the issue is probably the body that tracks is. Oh, we need to like, we need to turn this. <laughs> so, right. We have things set up so that the client sends to the back end some JSON, right? The, the tracks and it, and really the whole record. It's just a bunch of JSON that we parse automatic, well, not automatically, but through deserialization uh, that's handled for us as part of like getting stuff into the handler. But then when we want to send uh, this tracks information into the database, we're storing it as JSON. Um, so I think we just need to somehow like serialize tracks. space doesn't want to auto complete why not yeah 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 nothing wants to work right now in this that's interesting what if I get rid of that that makes the error go away yeah eventually if I save it a couple times all right uh, let's see track is it tracks or track? It's tracks, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 
how do I force something to be JSON again? How do I serialize it? Ooh, maybe like that? Can I do that? What does this macro do? Constructs a certain JSON colon colon value from a JSON literal. Okay, so it's not a, that, that's the wrong thing. Um, if I wanted, variables or expressions can be interpolated into the JSON literal. Any type interpolated into an array element or object value must implement series serialized trait while any type interpolated into an object key must in, uh, implement into string. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so you can do that. Oh, so I would think that would work, but that, it doesn't like that. Right, so now this is a string. Maybe let's not make it a string. Maybe it wants a, uh, a value. It, need, it needs to think a little bit. Okay, so we can do that. So this forces it to be a value, and that's what tracks ends up corresponding to internally. So that works. Uh, now we need to make sure we do the same thing for create bulk. Yeah, we already had stream ID, so we don't need that again, but we were missing tracks. And so this was, uh, this was like getting to the database and we were trying to create the row in the table, uh, but when I, when I defined, oh yeah, it's episode.tracks, not body. Uh, because why Why would it be the same? Um, in, uh, in the definition of the uh, table, I made it so that this is not null. It has to be populated. Because it should be. Even if it's like an empty array, it should still be an empty array. It shouldn't be a null. It's just asking for problems. Uh, okay, so now we need to restart CRUD API, rebuild it. So, questions? <laughs> uh, this, this will take hopefully not too, too long to build, but uh, Hmm. Even faster than I thought. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to click the button again. We're going to get these errors about topics. Um, so this was something that in the, in like the front end stuff for uh, streams and all that, I said, oh, well, there's this other record called the topic that is related to this, but then I never built the API for topics. They're like tags or labels or something to relate streams. Like all the streams about coding would be tied to the coding topic. I thought that would be a really good idea because if I have, it's just like, you know, putting tags on your stream here on Twitch uh, for findability. But I was thinking more about, uh, well, couple things. One, eventually it'd be really cool if instead of like using the the Twitch console to set things up and remember what tags I normally use for streams, I would use this tool to set all that up uh, in advance. And so I would create the stream first in the tool and then the stream would start <laughs> rather than have to, uh, you know, do the stream and then put the stuff in the tool after the fact. And two, for things like topics slash tags, um, that information could be really helpful for where I want to go with um, AI, you know, GPT-4 generated descriptions and other things based on that kind of metadata. Uh, anyway, has nothing to do with what we're working on. I just wanted to explain the error. Uh, I clicked the button and there was a put, it came back 200. There was a response so we can see Hey, look, it's PAL multiplayer with subs day one, episode one, two, and three. 
So those things exist. So, um, what are we at so far? Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna go back on the thing I said before, you know, we're working on issue one. I'm gonna say, start working on this issue. That's gonna put us on a branch. And we're just gonna do that. It's gonna be easier for keeping track of what we're doing. Uh, and then, so this is what we changed. We added our new bulk create endpoint. We updated bulk create to actually work. Uh, we uh, fixed create as well. We updated the struct to call it records instead of episodes. We um, did some cleanup of our data provider and our front ends and created a bulk create um, method. We updated the timeline to address some of the things that were we were getting complaints about, like using use callback. Uh, also remove some code we're not actually using. Uh, and then we updated our stream silence detection input to add uh, all of this code to bulk create episodes. And uh, I'm gonna commit that and publish that branch. And in the meantime, we're gonna try something. It's maybe not gonna work. Um, hold on one sec. So you may be wondering what's up with the uh, like when I click stuff, you see like boxes popping up. There was something I turned on. There you go. Highlight updates when components render. Okay, we don't we don't need that all the time. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go over to episodes, and there they are. We did it. Now if I click this, this doesn't work, but uh, because I've not implemented the. Uh, uh, endpoint to pull the data, but we have a title. They don't have descriptions because they didn't populate that. They have created that. Um, there is other data there. Like if we look at the network tab where we did get episodes, here's the, well, the data that we're pulling. I guess we're really just pulling the data. There's the ID, the title created at. There is more data. Let's see. Where's a uh, PG admin? Mm, PG admin. Could take a peek at the database. Uh, so yeah, so that's a long time coming. Having the ability to create episodes from the stream. And this is not Exactly, like we, we took a couple of different steps that ended up not being the thing that we uh, ended up doing. Like, so if, I, if we go back to the stream, here's the stream we were working on. This takes a minute to load because of reasons. We can make it faster. I just haven't yet. Uh, while we're loading that, I'm also going into the PG admin and pulling up some data. Um, so like we have the summary here and so there's other stuff here that, um, yep, yeah, that, uh, it, like the, the thumbnail and the speech audio track, um, this is for something? What was this for? Did this tie into how the transcript worked? But we have the transcript. I'm not sure. So we spent a lot of time working on this, and this is going to be very helpful um, in the future. But kind of one of the things I was imagining is maybe we would use the transcript somehow, like look at the timestamps to define the episodes. And we might do that. I think what, at least for now, I think instead of spending more time refining identifying where the episodes are. Uh, what's coming next is going to be getting the data out of this tool to import into uh, DaVinci Resolve, my video editor. And part of that is gonna be getting the transcript information. But specifically, like for each episode, let me pull down PG Admin here. 
Um, so for each episode, we have this tracks information, and hopefully this, this is looking good. This is my first time looking at the data dumped in there, right? So we have day one, episode one, here. Um, something that occurs to me right now, we may want to have like a, an ordering field. Um, like you can see, these were all created at the exact same time, effectively. Um, we might want to have something to say, I mean, so the title says episode one, but we might want something that's like an episode number column to keep them sortable. Uh, you could look at the tracks, right? To, to see some of that information, but that information is tied to a particular stream. You could also, like once we have multiple episodes from different streams, you could or get like you could sort by when the streams occurred and those sorts of things. Um, what am I missing here? Oh right, wait, 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 wait. Where? So, right. So we have a series table. Um, and we have topic, episode, topic, series. Probably what we need to do, we need maybe two more columns here. We need one to relate the episode to a series, and we need another one to order the episodes within that series. Um, yeah, let me just take a note of that because that's something that we almost certainly need to actually scale this up to like <laughs> representing all the data. Uh, so let's see. Uh, series ID in episode. Uh, order. Uh, in episode, yep. Nope, no seasons. It's a good try, Copilot. All right, so uh, let's see. What else do I see here? So we have tracks. Now these tracks only make sense in the context of the, the stream that the episode is from, right? It's so here we have this episode one that says start, oh yeah, start zero D is actually a valid uh, ISO 8601 timestamp. It doesn't have a T there because um, any like date sized uh, things, so like days or months or years are before the T and then you don't need the T. So that's basically zero. So like the, the beginning, no, no duration, right? Is the start. And the end is uh, PT6209. So uh, interesting. What is that? 6,000 seconds, 10 minutes. That's interesting. Is that right? 6209? Hmm. And then this one starts. Uh, wait, wait, wait. 60 seconds. 60, uh, 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes an hour is 3,600 seconds an hour. There's the calculator. Look, I can't, I can't do math. Uh, so if that's seconds, that's 103 minutes. 1.7 hours. That can't be right. Is that what we sent the back end? Interesting. Well, I don't suppose I still have, aha, I do have the put, there we go. So what was the request? Oh, that's what I sent. 
PT0S, which is equivalent to P0D, uh, PT6209. Interesting. Did we miss? Feels like maybe this didn't work. Maybe we do need some unit tests around that code that we just wrote. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna take a little break here though, top off my water and uh, stretch my legs. And when we come back, what's the next thing to do? Well, uh, let's see, while I'm, while I'm still thinking about this, we did open that, well, we pushed the, the branch. We can open the pull request and uh, there's no one else here to uh, to approve, it's just me. So we're just gonna merge it and we're gonna be done. We don't have any merging rules. We don't have any uh, continuous integration. We have, we have no checks. Uh, squash and merge, there we go, there it goes. Uh, that's not the email address I wanted to use. Uh, it's fine. Approved, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Well, I just said there was a bug in it, so that's fine. It's all good. All right, so I'm gonna take a break here though. We're gonna come back to uh, working on other things on the project plan. All right, BRB.